Welcome to the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise podcast with global sales trainer and professional speaker Lois Kofi. Each week it is her goal to share inspiration and education for you to be, do, have the best health and wealth and wisdom for your life. Well, all right, all right, all right. Happy Friday, everyone. It is Coach Lois. I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. Happy Friday the 13th. If you are tuning in live, this is the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise live broadcast. You may be watching from my Facebook community. You may be watching from LinkedIn. I think I'm I think I'm li- I'm live on LinkedIn for the first time today. Whoop, whoop. And of course, my YouTube subscribers. I just want to acknowledge you all for being here today. And if you're on the replay, uh, you can always comment below hashtag replay. And if you are joining us live at any time during the show, as always, I encourage community. I encourage questions. I encourage shout outs and I will acknowledge you. If this is your first time tuning in, I just want to welcome you. Um, I do tune in and I'm almost at 200 episodes, you guys, almost at 200 episodes. So I do four to five episodes, give or take every single month. And it's all for you, all designed to help you live your best life as a salesperson and entrepreneur, have your best health, your best wealth and your best wisdom. So today's guest is truly, I think she could help us with all three things, our best health, our best wealth, our best wisdom. Wisdom. Um, I met Elisa actually through her cousin, Monica. Monica's been on my show, I think now twice, and amazing healing family, amazing women in my life, amazing supporters for me as I've gone through a lot of awakenings throughout the last few months, last several months, actually. Um, and so Elisa is actually a certified master level medical intuitive and life coach. Um, and she discovered her gifts as an intuitive healer. So we're going to be talking about intuition today and trusting that. Um, and she found this out because she healed her body from the symptoms of not one, not two, but three autoimmune disorders. So she actually helped me work through some emotions. We'll talk about that stuff later. Um, Alisa, welcome. And, and please share with us how, a little bit about your journey. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Um, in um, 2016-17, around there, I noticed that my body started shutting down from fatigue and from feeling overwhelmed and burned out. I was working um, about a 50 hour work week. I had, I have two kids, uh, dogs, and I was married at the time um, and noticed that like, I was always on the go, always working, always like everywhere. I felt like I was completely scattered. And what happened was my body just started shutting down. It was, um, I, I would have times where I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. I'd get really bad back pain. Um, I would feel really fatigued all day long, like I needed to sleep. And what happened was um, I, when I went to the doctor, they said, oh, your thyroid isn't good. So they tested me and I had um, hyper, I had uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And then they said, but we think you also have rheumatoid arthritis because of your back stuff. So they sent me to another doctor (laughs) and he's like, yeah, you have rheumatoid arthritis, but you might also have this other thing. And I'm going to send you to this other doctor. So I went to an endocrinologist, a rheumatologist, a pain manager. I had, I had the whole shebang of doctors. And, um, I finally went to this one doctor, a rheumatologist, and she, you know, I spent about five minutes in her care. And she said, yep, you have the um, marker for um, ankylosing spondylitis. And so I'm going to start you on this injectable. And um, and by then I was on like six or seven other medications. So it was like trying to keep up with, you know, my health care and my kids and my job. And mm-hmm. um, I got to the point where after taking all of this, I was like, oh, my gosh, none of this is working. I just feel like I'm adding layer on top of layer and nobody knows. And the one thing that really bothered me the most, Lois, about the, you know, the journey with those particular doctors, and I'm not saying all doctors are like this, I will never claim that, but none of them ever said you can heal from this. 
none of them ever said that there is, you know, a way to manage this and that you, you'll be out of pain one day. And I think that's what like made me the most sad and most frustrated and made me want to just give up altogether. And um, because I think that we all can heal, like maybe not cure things, but we can all heal on an energetic level and understand our disease, you know, better. And so um, by the end of 2018, I quit my job and solely focused on working on my body. And over the next six months, I, I, you know, um, detoxed off all the medications that they had put me on. I started working with energy. I started working in my own trauma. And as I started doing that, I realized that I was like picking up other people's energy and that I was starting to read things. And all of a sudden somebody walk in the room and I'd get this really bad headache. And I'd be like, do you have a headache? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can feel it. And I'm like, maybe we can heal this. Like, what is this about? Because I had already known how to do it myself. So it's really um, been just kind of like this thing where I didn't didn't go into being like, hey, I'm going to be a healer and I'm, I'm going to teach people how to heal their bodies. It was like, this was my gift. This was my journey. I was supposed to go through all those things mm. in 20, you know, 2017 and before to get to that breakdown point to realize, oh my gosh, we need to start thinking outside the box when it comes to medicine when it comes to healing, because in, in, it's more so now with 2020, ha with the, all that that happens, that this is on a grander scale. So kind of like that happens. And then like Corona hit and I was like, okay, this whole thing, this means something. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not the only one doing this work. I know of so many other people out there that can, you know, tap into people and um, help them energetically. But um, mm -hmm. my own personal journey is that I did it myself, you know, and I know how to heal. So I teach other people how to do that now. That is so amazing. Um, gosh, so much to unpack there. I, since my, my podcast starts with the word healthy, which includes the word heal, I'd like to start there first. Um, Cause I remember when I was selling nutritional products and supplements and things, we were really, it was a no, no to say the word heal. And then, then you have people like Louise Hay, who has the book, you can heal your life other than her though. Uh, and maybe Joe Dispenza to some degree. Um, there's so much taboo, so much, Oh, you got to go to the doctor and get a prescription. It's more of the corrective model. And it seems like mm -hmm. most people like you with your three autoimmune diseases, I had one and it was so at first until I figured it out, it was so debilitating. And the doctors, again, same thing, you know, like you're going to have this disease for the rest of your life. So a lot of outside sources are, are for lack of a better word, brainwashing to think, ah, I'm just going to be sick the rest of my life. Right. And yet, you leaned into your intuition. So how can people work on their intuition and trust it when we've been so programmed to just go take a pill? Yeah. So first of all, I mean, there's, like you said, there's so much to unpack. I could spend like three hours talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> we probably have and probably will. But, um, you know, healing is more about like understanding why it's happening. And I think that a lot of people are, are so afraid of being sick and that, you know, going to the doctor, they just want the instant cure and just tell me I'm better. Tell me I'm going to be okay. And healing is kind of like that. Like we're all going to be okay, no matter what, like you, ha that's the one thing that I tell my clients is like, no matter what happens with this, you're going to be okay. Like, and that's, that's a, an emotional, spiritual part of what's lacking in our healthcare system is that there is no compassion around the person and feeling that that fear. Mm. And so, you know, and we there are two different, you know, real big vibrations, frequencies here. There's there's love, you know, this all loving power that can get through anything, and then there's this fear. And when you when you find out like you're sick or like that something's wrong with you, instantly we go into the fear. And the doctors, in my experience, 
with my doctors, it was, there was no like, you're going to be okay factor. And so mm. part of healing is healing the mind around it and healing the fear that you're sick, that this is part of your journey and that your body is sending you messages of places in your, your, your soul in your whole being, because your soul is connected to your body and your body is connected to your mind and your mind is connected, you know, to your soul. And it's like, it's all connected. So your body is sending signals to yourself that there is something off and out of alignment with your being, with Mm -hmm. your soul. And so what I studied is right when I figured this out, I went right into metaphysics. I got all the books. I started tapping into, you know, some higher frequencies when it came to like, what does this mean? I started um, researching with all my clients when they'd have a specific thing, I would tap into their trauma and see if it related to other people's traumas, same way. Mm -hmm. And what I found is when we healed that core root trauma, their symptoms went away. Mm -hmm. I'm not joking. Like when we went back and go, oh, that guilt that I felt around age 10 when I bullied that girl in fourth grade and I'm still carrying around, that stuff is still living in my digestive system or it's living in my gut. And that's why I keep getting heartburn or why I keep getting, you know, diarrhea or whatever. And those are really easy, quick fixes. It's some of the, you know, more chronic, like the autoimmune stuff. That's like over time type of healing. So when we go back and heal that and i use shamanic practices with that journeying and tapping and havening and a few other energy um you know quantum energy techniques when we go back and heal that the body starts to respond and it's kind of like the energy re redistributes in the body and like it it knows how to heal itself like the body knows so um when you're no longer sitting with that energy it can heal um so, and then the other thing is like, do I prevent death? A lot of people say that like, okay, I have like stage four cancer and I'm dying. Wow. Okay. Well, when you're working with somebody like that, they might, they might, their physical body might die, but their death is lovely because they understand their disease. They understand where it came from. They understand how to you know why they're letting go now. And so there's a there's a graceful process to that. So that's the very extreme. Like mm-hmm. I work more with like anxiety, diarrhea, um, you know, digestion, migraines, autoimmune, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So does that kind of answer your question around healing? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. No. And you brought up a lot of great things. Just coming from a place of metaphysical. Um, coming from a place of getting to the root cause and truly trusting your intuition. I had a friend, I just got off a call this morning with a friend who trusted his intuition. Turns out he had like lung cancer and he had to remove a part of his lung. Um, and that was sourced back to when he was in the military and was exposed to asbestos. And had he not trusted his intuition and taken action as soon as he did, we don't know what might have happened. So I think it's it's a really good reminder for people to listen to your body mm-hmm. as opposing to pushing, pushing, pushing. And I, I do want to quickly say a couple of things. I want to acknowledge, uh, for whatever reason, this is my first time streaming on LinkedIn. So I see that Sean Waite is tuning in, but Sean, I could not see your comment without going to LinkedIn directly. So I'm not sure what's happening to the comments today. So just wanted to acknowledge Sean Waite is tuning in. And if you guys are seeing value in this interview today, please hit the share button because this is a really, really, really important message, um, especially after you know the pandemic, especially with a lot of us getting wake up calls. Uh, I, I think I started with you Um, I can't remember now uh, when I had that chronic diarrhea situation and I had digestive issues as a kid. Right. And, um, and it, it, it went away. It, it disappeared. I, I, I gave it compassion. I gave it love and acknowledgement. I didn't take a bunch of pills or Pepto-Bismol like I did when I was a kid and did all of that stuff. I just allowed it 
and it eventually went away. And that was, don't you think also that that's part of the healing process that most of us were too busy, right? And so stuck up in here that we just are on autopilot. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, <clears throat> you know, um, digestion's a lot around like not feeling grounded and feeling fearful of what's gonna come and feeling overwhelmed. And and so one of the best things you can do for digestion is to like, um, to stop doing things. <laughs> people are like but i gotta keep working i gotta keep taking care of my kids like kind of like okay yeah but like do bare minimum you know and i and i've talked to you about that like one of the first things my guides told me when, when i started this journey is you're gonna sit on the couch and do nothing for a while and i was like that's impossible i have like if you know everything i've done in my life i just keep going you know so to sit still when um when i when i'm like that it was it was a feat in itself so, mm. you know, with, with, um, with digestion, with anything we have to allow, we have, it's like a surrender. It's like this allowance and we're, we're trying to like fix it and we're trying to like make it and trying to do the, try, you know, and it gets to be like, we're, we're trying so hard that it doesn't like, that's not the point. The point is to sit back and go, okay. And even if you can just imagine that, you know, there's light coming in and going, Okay, I'm allowing, I'm opening up my body and allowing the light to come in to re, redistribute this, to uh, to get rid of this, to allow myself the, these few moments. And, mm -hmm. you know, these past few years have been the longest years of my life, as I can remember. I remember, my, you know, it, everything went by so fast before that. And now I live in this place where it's like time is longer and it just is going slower now because I've slowed down. Mm. You know, when you slow down, time slows down. And so these amount of years that I've spent working on my body make up, you know, two decades of, of being sick, of feeling like crap. Um, and if I had no, that's where I kind of kick myself. Like, I wish I had known this before because I would have been happier, healthier those, that whole time. But I mean, everything happens for a reason. But oh yeah. yeah. We, so anybody that's having type those types of digestion issues or whatever, just to allow yourself to breathe, do some breath work, you do the drumming. I'm sure that's really helpful for your system. Um, that methodic type of meditation, <laughs> yeah, and just getting into work, doing you know getting into the heart space and just allowing your body to heal and one other piece i needed to make sure that i say in this that always comes up is that our our minds are constantly trying to like put us in this place of just despair and fear and so one of the things that i did what you know very early on was instead of being like oh i'm sick and i have all these diseases i'm like oh i'm healing my body is is healing from this now and you just shifting that perspective of saying my body's healing. I, I remember the first time I said that I got up and I did something like I got up mm. and I washed the dishes or something, you know, because mm. like, oh, I am healing and just changing that energy of, oh, I'm this is healing now that that shifts so much. Mm. So I and that. I think with you and I hope I you know what I'm saying is like with with your um you met with me and I said, your tests are fine. You need to stop worrying. And I think that once you stopped worrying that there was something wrong with you, it like allowed the healing to happen. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll I don't mind at all sharing. I freaked out. Um, I had massive, yeah. I had massive fear. My acupuncturist said, yeah, this is, this is your kidneys. Um, and that's where a lot of your fear is coming from. And so I, I went to urgent care. I thought it because I thought I was dying. I had by then it was probably two and a half, give or take weeks of straight chronic diarrhea. And um, I don't mind talking about poop. So I hope you all are doing OK over there listening to me. But at any rate, um, and then that that same week, I also went and saw an acupuncturist like three times. Right. Because I was so, so programmed as a kid. I had digestive issues, a lot of shame 
a lot of, you know, gut stuff, a lot of mom wound stuff, which you also talked to me about last week. Um, we can maybe go there, but I also have something I want to talk to you about on, on the work sure. side of things. But, but to be able to trust and to surrender and to allow my body to just do its thing was like, wait, what? You mean I can't fix this right now? Wait a minute. I, I got to fix this. This is how I'm programmed. And so, yeah, it was, yeah. it was a huge shift that I, you know, can't thank you enough for And you were right. The tests, everything yeah, is fine. fine. <laughs> it, it's just that we're surrounded by a lot of fear in society too. the collective, you know, people freak out about having any virus, you know, we, when we get sick, um, we either try to push through it and pretend like it's not there or we're right away looking outside ourselves for the answers. So I want to thank you again for reminding me, you know, we, we can allow and surrender and let our body do its thing. We don't have to have a, a potion, lotion, or pill at the ready. Cause I was one of those people also that used to have hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month spent on shakes, supplements, all of the things, <laughs> right? All of them. And, and that's, oh, that's it's a great, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I don't even like saying anymore when I'm sick on my podcast, because then everybody's coming to me with some kind of something. But anyway, um, I digress. I digress. So that's, that's a great transition into the second part of my subject line of healthy and wealthy and wise, right? The wealthy mm -hmm. piece. So the other thing you helped me work through, and I'm using myself, but I'd love for you to talk maybe about other clients, however you want to share this. But a lot of people freak out. Like in January, I had COVID, so I didn't work for three weeks. In February, I had this chronic diarrhea thing. So I was like not fully able to be energetically working a lot either. So mm -hmm. I started to, to kind of freak out and you reminded me of your journey of how you like were told to like sit on the couch, right? I can't remember if it was like two years and just trust, yeah. surrender, allow, and trust that you're going to be provided for. Again, mm -hmm. my mind was like, are you freaking crazy lady? I got, I got places to go, people to see things to do, people to serve, all of that. So that was also my own worst enemy of the health thing because I thought I had to be working to make money, mm -hmm. right? So talk about that a little bit on the, the the mindset around trusting where the wealth and the abundance in our life comes from. Well, in this journey, I had to realize that I was valuable. That, uh, that me being here on this mission was valuable. And, um, and that, that's, that's a really hard place to come from when from five years old, you remember your parents struggling for money or always working. So we're, we're programmed to believe that you had to keep, mo you had to keep moving, you had to keep working in order to be provided for. And so that's, that is a mind shift where we have to retrain our brains and go, wait a minute, th this whole earth is so abundant in resources at mm -hmm. the ready, you know, and we're living in this place of, oh, there's not enough and no one's going to help me. And so, and, and I was like that, you know, I was like that for a lot of years where I had to keep working or I had to keep, you know, you know, going and it wasn't until I was completely stopped in my tracks. It was like, well, I physically cannot work. So how is this going to work? And I couldn't, I couldn't apply for any government stuff because I didn't qualify. It was too long of a process anyway. So I had to start inside out and this is always going to be an inside out job. Always. It is, this is not a thing where you go throw a, a pill or a manifestation mantra on you and go, okay, I got it. I'm good. You know, <laughs> this, is one of these, <laughs> this is one of these things where, do you feel valuable Lois? Hmm. Are you, are you valuable? Hmm. And if you are, then abundance is going to find you. If you feel like you are, you have something to give this earth, this mission, this place right now, 
then you are going to be provided for. And that's exactly what I was told was like, keep going. And, and I think I mentioned to you, like I, several times I was like, I'll just go get a job at HEB. I, you know, I'm in Texas, so I'll just go get a job at, or I'll go work here. Or I'll, you know, I'll go do this or this or this. And what would happen is like um, a friend would, you know, call and be like, hey, I need, you know, this short amount of work done for a couple of hours. Will you do it on your computer at home? And it was like stuff I could do easy and it would just come. And then I would get gifts and then I would get, you know, things and then I'd start doing clients. And it, it just kind of just happened. And every time I got stressed out, oh, am I going to be provided for? I was like, no, that is old Elisa going that I don't have a place here, that I'm not seen here, that I'm not wanted here. I'm, that's a scarcity place. Mm. And so now it's, I, I don't really have those times very much anymore. Um, I see other people having them and sometimes it can infect me a little and go, oh, you're right, maybe we should freak out. And then I'm like, no, we shouldn't because this, we're all provided for. As long as you feel like you are valued and seen and mm. worth it. Mm. Yeah, that, that was my. That's a, of, that's a lot of deep work, and you've been doing that deep work recently. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of like the inner, like I'm valuable, and I'm I have a, a right to be here and to take up space. Yeah, that's why I talk to my clients a lot about being seen, being heard, and being paid, and and sometimes that even just means being authentic and and real I, I think it isn't sometimes it's it's all the time where you come from this heart-centered place sorry i think i think i hear uh sirens going off <laughs> um in the background here but but i i had to open up and love myself to your point what i yeah. got to do in that moment was to go and 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 really love my inner child the child who is afraid of scarcity of afraid of abandonment afraid of not being enough and I, I really had to sit with that and, and do my own, you know, sacred rituals and, and different things to just even remind myself over and over again that I am enough. And of course, mm -hmm. January, February, March, um, it didn't necessarily show up the way it, it could have or I thought it should. However, I was always provided for and always more than always. enough. And I want to give a quick shout out to my friend, Lisa Poole. She's here saying thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to go a little yeah, over know, today. So I just want to remind just people. Want to one last, oh, sorry. I wanted I to one, say, say one thing on your piggyback. Yes. Go for it. When we look back on our lives, we go, oh, you know, it's always, I've always worked, it's always worked out. I was always provided for, whether I moved back in with my parents or I moved in with a friend or I, you know, had to, I always figured, it always got figured out. But we still live in this place of, oh, we're going to doom and it, gloom and it's all going to fall down. We need to look to the past and go, no, it's always worked out. So what, why would it change now? Mm hmm. Yes. Amen to that. Amen to that. Do you have any, uh, this will be my second to last question, um, but but last question before I want you to talk about your free gift. I wanted to go transition into the wisdom part of healthy and wealthy and wise. You know, we talked about healing yourself, slowing down, surrendering to your symptoms, whatever's happening, the wealth, surrendering and trusting for the abundance to flow, whatever that means for you, it's not even always in money. We could have like a five hour podcast episode about all of these topics. Um, but if we go into the wisdom piece, and when I think of wisdom, I think of that innate wisdom, that that intuition, how do you work with people to develop, help them develop that intuitive wisdom to trust that more instead of always looking outside themselves for the answers? Yeah, that's, that's the work I do. <laughs> that, that is it. It's, um, you know, um, even just in a relationship, I have several clients that are in relationships that are not working. And, um, you know, society has told us, you know, we need to work hard at those relationships, we need to give of ourselves, we need to try and try and try and sacrifice and sacrifice. And what I'm teaching my clients right now is I need you to listen to your body and what feels good. 
because right now the wisdom is in the body it the body is the messenger it's the temple it's the connector it's the conductor it's the radio and it tells us when it feels good and when it doesn't and what i tell most of my clients is if it does not bring you joy you say no and joy mm. is this bubbly light feeling that is you know, up here, it feels like, oh, that's so exciting. If you think about your favorite thing to do and it, it creates this, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. If you're not living in that 90% of the day, then you're not living in your wisdom. Hmm. And it's, and, and a lot of people are like, no, but we have to suffer and we have to, we have to fight hard and we have to, <laughs> we have to show that we care. And I'm like, okay, but for what and for who, and who told you that and why? And what's, what, what is the outcome? What are you getting as a reward at the end? Because the reward is in the now moment by following your joy right now. That's mm. the wisdom. It's not later on, I'm going to get this thing and everything's going to be great. It's like, go find it right now. It's going to be great. I love that. Yeah. Like you helped me uh, better understand my choices throughout the day. And I coach on this, right? So I'm a sales coach who tells people there's no such thing as time management. It's choice management. And how do you choose to spend your time? So if you would have told me three months ago during COVID that now I find joy and just drumming. I'm like, what can I do? I play now? the ukulele like, oh, a lot. <laughs> I know. Yep. And and I, I yeah. would have never believed that because I thought the 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 other version of myself in some other parallel universe said, no, 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 you've got to be working every minute, or you've got to you've got to be strategic with every time block, Lois. And then I was like, wait a minute, screw that. I'm not feeling joyful about how I'm using my time in this, this time block right now. So I, I do um, want to acknowledge we have a somewhat of a question. I don't know if you can, if you can speak to this. Sean Waite says, I really struggle with that belief process personally of clearing the path and waiting and not taking proactive action to go after things. So do you have any thoughts? I don't really know. Yeah, go ahead. So proactive action, um, I like to call it inspired action. Okay, so like, let's just talk about like, um, going to the grocery store. Something just simple like that. So today, in my current state, I would go, I would go, Alisa, do you want to go to the grocery store right now? And if I'm not feeling that, yes, let's go, then I'm not going to go. Because I will eventually have that time and like vibration. I will be in that space where I want to go and it will be magical and something will happen or I'll get a free whatever or discounts or something will happen. But when you're like, oh, I've got to go do this and I've got to get make this happen and da da da, da and, and, and you're in that constant, um, you know, moving like uh, moving just to move to to move things. It's you're not in you're not in your into own intuition. So mm. if, if what you're, if you're doing action because you're pumped about it and you're going and you're in, you're in that kind of zone of like, yes, I'm excited. And it, and that's the vibration you're giving success. That's going to feel successful. It's going to feel fulfilling. It's going to feel wonderful. But if you're just doing it because you think you need to move this over here and this over here to feel productive, try mm. doing some deep breathing for a couple of minutes try doing a nice meta heart activation they have it on mm. on youtube try doing um some drumming and just sit with what would feel really good to do next and go sometimes i don't even realize i'm gonna go walk the dog until i'm like i really want to go walk the dog right now and then i go and i meet someone that, it, that i'm supposed to meet and i get a new client and it's very um synchronistic it's something mm. about just being in this very flowy state of like everything's taken care of i'm okay and if that doesn't get done it's okay because it will get done and one of my favorite quotes of all time is everything in life is accomplished everything you want to do will be accomplished so we can that. just stop worrying about that 
Yeah. I love that. I hope that answers it a little bit. So if you're on that track of I'm going and I'm pumped and I'm doing this, then keep going. But if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm dragging. I don't feel good. This doesn't feel fulfilling. Stop and allow yourself to just be for a little while and see what it is that comes up that you want to do next. Even if it's on a weekend outside of work, whatever, just slowly get into that space. There's so many people that are living from that place now that are just in so much joy, that are just so happy, that are fulfilled, that really feel like this is a beautiful world. And I live there a lot where I look around, I'm like, this place is awesome. And most people are like, oh, it's crappy. We have war. We have that. And I'm like, no, but look at all the beauty. Look at all the joy that we can have. Hmm. I love it. Thank you so much. We are going a little over, but I feel like uh, Sean had a very, very important comment and, and it's it's so so common. So thank you, Sean, for bringing that up because I was in that same space six months ago and really struggling with knowing when to listen and rest and not judging myself when I, when I, and because here's the, the, the truth. I really believe this and you might think I'm, I'm way off and you might think I'm crazy. I know that COVID in January was a gift for me so that I could, because I was still, you know, I took a lot of time off in December, but I was like, I'm going to crush January. My goals for 2022 are so hot. They're so awesome. I still had this kind of push energy right? I'm going to make it happen. And then boom, sidelined and, and, uh, you know, had to reschedule things, cancel things, you know, all of this stuff. And I just kind of surrendered the white flag and said, okay, I guess I get to learn more about what I thought I was learning. I just didn't really fully implement. So I'm sure you can speak to that. If, if you don't, build in these opportunities to trust your intuition. Now, I think the universe sends you opportunities that you probably won't like <laughs> to, well, to learn I mean, how to do that. Yeah. Imagine if I had never gotten sick in the first mm. place, I'd still be working that job and married to that guy, <laughs> you know, like, and, and was I happy? Not, no, I wasn't. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that I couldn't be happy going back to working or doing something, but, uh, you know, or being married or anything like that now, but it's more of just like, I was supposed to go through that. Like when you look back on it, it's like, that was supposed to slow me down so that I could come back into who I really am. I am this mm -hmm. intuitive guide. I help people, you know, heal their bodies now. It's way different than it was you know, five, six years ago, it just, it, 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 I'm on a completely different trajectory. And that did that for you too. In January, you thought you were mm -hmm. going this one way, this one road. And what happened was the fog lifted from you being sick and just being there and being in the moment. And it was like, mm -hmm. Oh, there's this other road that I could take. There's this other path that's right there that I didn't see. And it, it feels more in alignment with me. It feels more loving. It feels more gentle and compassionate. And, and I think that's where we're, we're going in the future is with, especially with healthcare and with healing is that we're all going to be more compassionate and loving to each other now, you know, it's not going to be this hatred around vaccinations and, you know, are you, and aren't you and, and all that, and you got sick and are you sick and the fear of getting sick, it's going to be more of like, Hey, this is an opportunity for us to come back into ourselves and to really find out what our joy is so that we can start living our life on purpose rather than yes. just based on what everyone else wants you to do. Well, and honoring and respecting one another it also means we're more connected and we're more champions for each other instead of competing. Um, so all of those things. Well, I wanted to start wrapping up and, and uh, have people reach out to you if they want more um, support. What is your free gift all about today? Yeah, so I'm offering, I never do this, which is great, but I'm excited. And um, But anyway, it's a 15 minute call with me so that we can um, just go over any concerns that you have right now and how I might be able to help you. Um, and then I offer um, the sessions, you know, through my website, elisadube.com. But the, the first 15 minutes is free with me. 
Um, so you just go there and fill out your information and I'll be in touch to schedule that. Awesome. Thank you so much for your free gift for my audience, guys. Go to elisadubay.com forward slash free. I will also put it in the show notes and in the comments below, of course. If you guys saw value today, as always, please hit the share button. Um, sharing is caring, and especially with such a very, very unique topic. I've never had uh, someone like Elisa on my show. So someone who is a master level medical intuitive and life coach who has helped me. Um, she's not just a guest. She's also uh, helped me. And so she's the real deal. Just a couple of quick announcements. And then I have one more question for you, Elisa, if you can just hold tight. Um, as always, I want to remind you guys, um, we have these shows uh, typically most Fridays, uh, but next week um, we will not be having a show on Friday. The following week will be my friend Michelle LaFrance will be talking about how to break the code, uh, basically a different version of personality types or colors when you're trying to sell um, at the dinner table and the Zoom and room or in the boardroom or in a meeting. Um, she has ways, tips and tricks and tools on how you can close more sales simply by breaking the code of uh, the personality of the person that you're sitting across from. And then I'm super excited to announce on May 30th, it is Memorial Day here in America, I'm going to be bringing my husband on as my guest, and he's going to be going public for the first time um, as the ghost whisperer. And he's uh, channeling um, people who've passed away, you know, dead souls um, into his paintings. And that all happened. Um, thank you as a result of him listening to his intuition and uh, essentially going inward and figuring out what the heck is going on with me. And um, now it's created a whole new business for him. And we're really excited to be able to share that with you guys. And then my last announcement here, if um, you guys haven't heard of this before, I'm going to be talking more about it. If you'd like to become a uh, pledge donor, uh, a supporter of Healthy and Wealthy and Wise, you now have the opportunity to do that. And you get lots and lots of benefits. Um, I'll put this in the show notes as well, but it's monthly pledges to help support the growth of Healthy and Wealthy and Wise, just to help spread my movement to the masses and help bring, help, you know, essentially bring hope, healing, support, and community to everyone here post pandemic. And so I've got lots of benefits for you. So go to patron.podbean.com forward slash Lois Kofi to see your pledge options. Um, there's a lot of great information there that would take too long for me to go over. So I'm not going to go over all of that, but check that out. So as we wrap it up, um, Alisa, my, my closing question for all my guests is always the same. Um, when you hear the phrase healthy and wealthy and wise, what does it mean to you? It means feeling completely at peace with yourself, feeling whole and uh, in the moment, and it feels like everything's going to be taken care of, and I'm healthy, and I am gold. I'm the Midas. Ah, I love it. <laughs> I, I love that. I'm the Midas. That's beautiful. Oh, I'm going to borrow that. I am so yeah. going to borrow that because I know <laughs> intrinsically that we all have the Midas touch, right? Um, and it's just a matter of going inward and trusting your intuition. I love that. Thank you yeah, so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you. It was <laughs> so wonderful being here with you. I appreciate you so much. Awesome. Much love to you and to everyone here. We just want to wish you an amazing, amazing uh, week ahead. Um, happy eclipse. Happy happy uh, all of the things that's coming up in the next week. It's, it's going to be a big week energetically. So we just want to wish you... Uh, your best health, your best wealth, and your best wisdom. And again, trusting your intuition. Watch the show again. Share it with your friends. Um, have conversations. Comment below if you watch on the replay and you have thoughts or feedback or questions. And of course, reach out to Elisa for her amazing free gift. And until next time, guys, be well, be kind to yourself and to others. Bye-bye for now. 
Well, all right, all right, all right. Thank you for attending another amazing Healthy and Wealthy and Wise show. Thank you so much. Please subscribe, download, leave a review or a rating. And also, if you felt like you could benefit from some help, maybe some magnetic mind support, maybe some lead generation and sales strategy, I would love to gift you a free month of my membership or go to bookacallwithlois.com. That's right, www.bookacallwithlois.com. And if you haven't had a one-time free strategy session with me, that's my gift to you today for attending all the way to the end. Here's to your best health, your best wealth, and your best wisdom.